During the Second World War, the United States was very interested in guided bombs. However, due to the technological limitations at the time, radio guidance and other technologies were not very mature. Throughout the war, the guided bombs used by both sides were not very effective. During this time, a man named Boris Frederick Skinner led the Pigeon Project, hoping to use pigeons to guide bombs in place of some equipment. Boris Frederick Skinner was a legendary figure, being an inventor, psychologist, writer, and social philosopher. He was once named the most influential psychologist of the 20th century. Such a broad-minded person naturally did things differently. He thought of using the pecking behavior of pigeons to guide the flight of gliding bombs, thus the origin of the Pigeon Project. This idea was similar to the anti-tank dogs and bat bombs of the same period. At first, the Pigeon Project was certainly difficult for people to accept. Most people thought it was unlikely, and the military also placed more value on electronic equipment. Skinner himself was influential in some fields, and his plan was not entirely unreasonable. After a brief struggle, the Pigeon Project received $25,000 in funding from the military. In fact, the Pigeon Project itself was full of high technology. The first step of the plan was to train pigeons to peck at a fixed area on a screen with their beaks. Pigeons were chosen because they were easy to obtain, inexpensive, small in size, and reasonably intelligent. A trained pigeon would quickly peck at the screen within a short period. Since the corresponding bomb for the Pigeon Project was a guided anti-ship bomb, the target images used in training were of ships. These images did not need to be specific to a certain type of ship, as the pigeons couldn't tell the difference. Normally, the most important targets would be simulated, and the pigeons would be enticed with food to peck at the images. The trained pigeons would be fixed inside the guidance compartment of the guided bomb. Skinner's design was to place three pigeons in each guidance compartment and restrict their movement, allowing only the head to move. Each pigeon would have a small screen in front of it, displaying the images captured by the bomb's camera. The center of the image would be aimed at the target ship. The screen used technology similar to today's touchscreens, and electrodes would be installed on the pigeon's beaks. If the image of the ship was in the center of the screen, it meant that the bomb was flying towards the target. If the image shifted, the electrodes on the pigeon's beak would peck outside the center, and the sensors would adjust the bomb's direction until it was aimed at the target. In reality, this adjustment process was continuous, as the target was moving and the bomb itself would be affected by factors such as wind during its glide. Having three pigeons improved the accuracy of hitting the target. When the three pigeons had different movements, the principle of majority rule would be applied. Some may ask, what if the three pigeons have completely different movements? In theory, trained pigeons were not likely to have such disagreements, and the video angle was narrow and the target image was large, giving the pigeons few other options. In the end, guided gliding bombs would fly towards their targets under the guidance of three pigeons, completing a suicidal attack. The heavy warhead would cause serious damage to the target, and the aircraft dropping the bomb would be far from the ship's anti-aircraft fire, improving safety. The U.S. military terminated the Pigeon Project in October 1944, as most people found the idea of having three pigeons inside their gliding bombs to be unreliable. Surprisingly, the United States revived the Pigeon Project in 1948, renaming it the Orcon Project. The new plan made good progress, and researchers found that the pigeons performed beyond everyone's expectations. They simulated a guided anti-ship missile flying at 400 miles per hour, and the pigeons were able to peck for times per second, with a success rate of 55.3%. It's important to note that this is not the hit rate, but rather the pigeon's ability to keep the target image on the screen, roughly aiming at the target. The US abandoned the Orcon project in 1953, as electronic guidance systems had made significant advances and pigeons were no longer needed.